Thank you, Jesus.
singing that if you would. If you love the Lord today, I want you to lift your hands to him. Come on, sing it again. King of glory. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise here today in this house. Hallelujah. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Lord, we bless your name today. How many just want to be with him today? Come on. How many of you just want to give him some praise today? Hallelujah. Sing it again. King of glory. King of glory. Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving today. We come into your courts with praise, being thankful unto you and blessing your name. Come on, just praise him for another minute here. Lord, we honor your name. We bless you. Lord, we're not ashamed to say that you are the Lord of lords and King of kings. We're here to praise you. We're here to honor you. Lord, we thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to come into the house of God on your day, the Lord's day, and honor you and bless you and praise you for who you are, for what you have done for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Come on and say, the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah, Lord, we honor you. We bless you. We praise you. We lift our voices today to say you are the king of glory. And we bless you and we honor you. We thank you today for your presence. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. Lay your hand on your heart today. Pray this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, the greatest thing in my life is to serve you. Come on, it's, say it aloud. It's to serve you. Say, I am a worshiper. It's my highest calling. And I thank you today that I have a voice to sing, that I have hands to raise, that I have a mind that can serve you with all my heart, with all my soul, in Jesus' name. Now I pray today that my ears will be open, my heart will be open, to the things of God. Today I will hear the word of God and I will not resist it. I will enjoy it. I will do it. I'm a doer of the word and not just a hearer. My greatest desire is to serve God all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Come on, pray this with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Stretch your hands towards our city. Lord, we take this time to pray for our city. We pray for Mayor Fisher. We pray for every police officer, every firefighter, every EMS worker, God. We pray for the city, Lord, leaders, God, that you'll help this city, God, acknowledge you and, and look to you for truth and guidance, Lord. And we'll do the things that God's called us to do. Lord, we curse racism. We curse evil. We curse hatred and murder off of our city. We pray this shall be a city of peace in the name of the Lord. And we pray, oh God, that you'll bring a great revival to our city, bring a revival to our colleges. I pray for Bellman. I pray for U of L. I pray for JCC. I pray for Spalding. I pray in the name of the Lord for our high schools, God. God, bring a move of God to our high schools, we pray in the name of the Lord that no one can stop that no one can extinguish. But Lord, let, let young men and women, God, be proud that they're a Christian. They'll stand for God. Lord, create a fire in us, God, to serve you. With all of our heart and soul and mind and strength, 
We pray for protection over our city. We pray that God's hand, Lord, will give us grace and mercy in the name of the Lord. And we know that our prayers make a difference today in the name of the Lord. I want us to pray the Ten Commandments together. Let's begin to pray the Ten Commandments. The, the t Ten Commandments are powerful. How many of you know if we just would do the Ten Commandments in our nation, that our nation would be transformed? Come on, amen. Lord, you said to have no other gods before us. Come on, let's proclaim that right now. Lord, you are the only God in my life. You are the only one I'm going to worship. I'm not worshiping idols. I'm not worshiping the graven images, Lord, things made by the hands of people. I'm working the, the true, I'm serving the true, the living God who created the heavens and the earth in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm going to remember the Sabbath day. I'm going to keep it holy. This day is a day of worship. This day is a day to come and honor God in his sanctuary, in his house. In the name of the Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, I'm going to honor my father and mother in the name of the Lord to the best of my ability. Lord, we come against murder, Lord. We come against murder, God. It shall not happen, Lord, Lord, in our city. In the name of the Lord, we curse murder and evil and wickedness and hatred. We pray, oh God, that we'll be people of peace in the name of the Lord. Lord, we're going to be faithful men and women. God, your word says, God, not to commit adultery, God. Lord, we, in our minds and our hearts, God, we're going to be pure and faithful and holy to you. God, you said in your word, God, we're not to covet. Hallelujah. Lord, we're not going to covet. Lord, I'm not going to have in my heart a covetous heart, God. Lord, for things that, Lord, that are not mine. And in the name of the Lord, and I thank you, God, for the power of God, the strength of God to help me in the name of the Lord. And I thank you, God, we're going to serve you all the days of our life. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Lord, you said not to commit murder, God. You said not to steal, Lord. You said not to lie, Lord. And we stand upon your righteousness and your holiness in the name of the Lord. We thank you, God, for your word. Lord, your word says that righteousness shall exalt a nation, but sin will be a reproach to any people. And God, we're going to serve you to the best of our ability in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we need to pray for our elections right now. I want everybody in this place to lift a hand to say that you're in agreement with that. Lord, we pray today, God, for our elections, Lord. Lord, we need godly men and women in office. We need people that believe, God, in America and love America. We need people, God, that will tell the truth, Lord. We need people, God, that will stand for right, righteous and godly principles. We pray, oh God, that every Christian will go out and get out and vote. We pray, oh God, that our elections, God, shall help this nation to elect the right people, Lord, in our city, Lord, in our county, in our state. Lord, in the, in, the, uh, in the Senate, Lord, in the, in the House of Representatives, for judges, God. God, we humble ourselves today, and we pray, oh God, and we call upon the name of the Lord, God, that you will help us in America, God, to serve you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen. Amen. Give the Lord a great hand today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek and ye shall find not, and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. The disciples of Jesus asked Christ, teach us to pray if you want big prayers answered financial increase healing of your sickness and conversions to Christ in your family then you must know how to pray in dr. Bob Rogers book trio you'll learn how to pray why to pray and the blessings that are released when we pray you're gonna see a change totally take place in our families in the name of the Lord but it all begins through prayer for your gift of $30 or more to the ministry, Dr. Bob Rogers wants to show his gratitude by sending you his compelling three-book set on prayer. Call now, 1-888-613-6080, or visit our online store at bobrogersministries.org, or write us at Bob Rogers Ministries, P.O. Box 19229, Louisville, Kentucky, 40259.
Are you interested in being used by God and seeing His work excel on the earth? Even if you're not a pastor, the Church Planting and Growth Conference will challenge and encourage you in serving in the kingdom of God. Dr. Henrik Vorster is truly one of the greatest at church planting and building God's kingdom, and he'll be at Evangel World Prayer Center October 23rd through the 25th at 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. Discover your role or fine-tune your call in ministry. For information, go to worldprayercenter.org. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. God is going to blow fresh fire into your spirit tonight. And every challenge that you've been unable to break through, you will break it tonight. Get ready for fun for the entire family on October 28th at 5 p.m. at Hallelujah Night at Evangel World Prayer Center, located at 6900 Billtown Road, just off the Gene Snyder. Pastor Bob Rogers will present an illustrated sermon. There will be prizes and gifts for the best Bible costume. And outside, there will be bouncy houses, booths with food and games, a petting zoo, and lots of candy for your kids. Get more information at worldprayercenter.org. And signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand, everybody standing. Would you take your Bible and hold it to the Lord? Glad to see Dr. Chris today. Love you, buddy. Hold your Bible high. Hold your purse up. Hold a $20 bill high. But I want everyone to say with me out loud, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp unto my feet. This is my road map. Tells me how to get to heaven. Tells me how to get healed. Tells me how to be blessed of God. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In Jesus' name. As you remain standing, turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 22, and I want to begin reading in verse 40, Luke 22, 40. Would you say that, please? Luke 22, 40. If you don't have a Bible, look on the Bible of someone next to you. Today I want to share really out of my heart because it is something that is burning inside of me. Sometimes people get a sermon, but other times you have a message from God. And I want to share a message that God has given in my life. And really, you only have one or two messages, I think, as a pastor, as a preacher. <coughs> and I want to share my message. In verse 40, it says, And when he was at the place, he said to them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as if there were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, he was come to his disciples, and he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. 
There's another scripture I would also like to read from the book of Philippians, Philippians 4, 6. And it says, be careful for nothing or don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Say that with me, by prayer and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I want to share today about the power of supplication. There is uh, sometimes confusion when you talk about prayer and supplication. And many people think it's all the same thing, but it's not. Just like basketball is not football and football is not basketball, well, prayer and supplication are, are not the same thing. Jesus gave the definition of prayer when uh, he said in Matthew chapter 7, 7, Ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. He defined it, prayer, as to ask. Prayer is not meditation. We thank God for meditation. We thank God for praise. But that does not take the place of prayer. Prayer is to ask. You take the A off of ask, the S off of seek, the K off of, of knock, and it spells ask. And so when it comes to the Lord's Prayer, he taught his disciples to pray. And it was our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He taught us how to praise and worship. And that brings us into the throne room of God. And then it begins the prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many know that's a question mark? That's asking. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. That's asking. Uh, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That's asking. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's asking. So when he taught us to pray, he taught us to ask. Come boldly before the throne room of grace that you might receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We're to ask. In the book of Psalms, and that's one of my favorite scriptures, 81.10, it says, I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. In other words, ask big prayers. If you're believing God for $1,000 answers, don't be praying $100 prayers. Ask big, and God says he will answer in a big way. But prayer is not supplication. Supplication takes prayer to a completely different level. Just like an airplane can travel much faster than a car, well, supplication catapults you to the next level. When you talk about supplication, it's praying with fervor. Uh, supplication is mentioned 60 times in the Bible, and in every case, it brings an answer. When people uh, enter into supplication, there is a posture for supplication. There's kneeling. There is laying down, there's bowing down, there's lifting your hands. There is emotion. Uh, years ago, I was in Iraq, and uh, it was during Ramadan, and the uh, Muslims were in a 30-day fast, and they fast until the evening meal. Actually, they fast until it's sundown. They take a thread and they hold it up, and if they cannot see the thread, then they can drink water and they can eat. Their fast is different than a Christian fast. Christians drink water. They do not during daylight. But at night, they eat and they, they uh, feast. And so I was drinking a bottle of water out on the street. It was 115 degrees, and I'm drinking this water, and a policeman came to arrest me. He said, this is Ramadan, and you're drinking water, and it's daylight. And I apologized, and I remember that night, there was this sound that went off, and it was, uh, it was a call to prayer, and it was 5 o'clock in the morning. So I got up, and I went outside on the balcony. I was on the fifth floor, 
And I looked down in the parking lot, and there was a Muslim man, and he was jumping up and down. He was waving his arms, and then he ran around the parking lot. I mean, it wasn't one of these little lay-me-down-to-sleep prayers. This fellow was really, really involved in that. Now, we do not believe Allah is the same God as Jehovah in which we serve. We don't believe that God has different names. That's a demon. That's an evil power that he's praying to and entering into supplication to. And it's interesting that every terrorist that was involved in 9-11 had gone on a Ramadan fast and was involved in empowering themselves for the evil that uh, they were involved in. And so the point that I'm making was, though, he was entering into this supplication for this evil power to empower him. And there is a presence that happens when you enter into prayer with fervency. When we talk about uh, supplication, crying is a part of supplication. It's mentioned seven times with supplication. In Psalms 142, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. Weeping. That's where crying takes another level. It's used three times. In Jeremiah 31, it says, And they shall come with weeping and supplication. But the highest form of supplication is when someone enters into a fast. They start fasting. It begins to push them right into a place of supplication or their prayers become to a completely different level. Now, you can enter into supplication and not fast, but if you enter into a fast, instantly you're into this position of supplication. You're entered into a place of great strength and power in prayer. Now, here we read the story about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. The night before he was to be crucified, he came to this garden and he prayed all night. And it says, when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. He was withdrawn from them, and he knelt down to pray. He entered into a posture. If you want to enter into a posture of supplication, kneel, lay down, bow down before God. He knelt down in a, a way of humbling himself to pray. And then he began to pray, and an angel appeared to him that strengthened him. And it says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. He started out in a prayer, and then it began to take a no, more earnest level that entered him into supplication. And the Bible says that there came great drops of blood. He began to sweat blood. Now, there's a medical term for that. And it's a, a condition that, uh, that uh, causes the sweat glands, which are surrounded by these uh, blood vessels. And these blood vessels can constrict, and they can dilate to the point where they rupture. And then that blood will then infuse itself with the sweat glands, and that's what happened to Jesus. And as he would sweat, I mean, have you ever prayed where you prayed with such uh, uh, effort that you perspired, you sweat, and, and blood came out of his pores as he did so. Now that was where you call it wasn't prayer, it entered into supplication. There's a tremendous story in church history, and it's about Polycarth. Polycarth was the bishop at the church of Smyrna, and you, you read about that in the book of Revelations. Uh, the apostle John was the only apostle that was not, didn't die of martyrdom, that wasn't beheaded, that wasn't crucified upside down or killed in some way, and they tried to kill him. They boiled him in oil, 
and they couldn't kill him. And finally, he was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, and there he wrote the book of Revelations. But one of his disciples was this young man, Polycarth. And Polycarth was such a powerful man of God that the Romans came to him and they took him from the church on a Sunday. And they said, we want you to offer incense unto Caesar. And when he refused to do it before the church, they said, then we are going to burn you alive in front of all the city. And he laughed at them and he said, you know, I'm 86 years old, and to uh, be burned in fire, fire is such uh, something that will last only for a moment. But what you don't understand, there's an eternal fire that the wicked will be destroyed in, and God has given me this honor after 86 years to die for him. So they tied him to a stake. They put these cords of wood around him and they caught him on fire. And he prayed with such fervor that two of the guards that were there, they fell to their knees and they accepted Christ. And, an, an, and then the amazing miracle happened. He didn't burn up. He was like the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. He just... He, he just was untouched by the flames. And so they took a spear and they thrust it into him and when he did, the, the water and fluids came out of his body and extinguished the fire. Now, if you were standing there, don't you think that would make you wonder? That's what you call a sign and a wonder. It makes you wonder. But the point is this, it was the power of supplication and prayer that begin to change everything. Now, in the book of Daniel, there's a, a great scripture, and that scripture says this. It says in Daniel, the ninth chapter in the 18th verse, it talks about how through prayer and supplication, and I want to read it here. Um, it says, we pray and we fast <clears throat> not just to have our, our, uh, our lives spared, but we pray for, uh, and supplicate for the mercy of God. Say, for the mercy of God. Now, when we talk about God's mercy and God's grace, it's a tremendous thing because uh, there's a difference between God's grace and God's mercy. All of the promises are given by God's grace. A grace is something that we didn't earn. Something, it's, it's like working and getting a raise when you didn't earn a, a raise. It's like being as guilty as uh, you can be and the judge letting you off. That's what mercy is. It's unmerited favor. And all of the scriptures are given by God's grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of works, lest any man could boast, but it's given by God's grace. It's, it's something that you didn't earn, but you receive it by faith. It's like in the book of, of Romans, uh, it, talks about, or, 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 uh, it talks about how Abraham believed God and it was counted to, to him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward is it not reckoned by grace? And so by, by faith, I believe God's grace to be healed. By faith, I believe God's grace to prosper. It comes by God's grace. Can you hear an amen? amen. Grace is listed in the Bible 170 times. But then there is mercy. Mercy is in the Bible 267 times, and there's a difference between grace and mercy. Mercy, you don't even have to believe God. God says, I give mercy to whom I'll give mercy. And uh, the Bible says, God is rich in mercy. Have you ever just believed God and trusted God 
And it seemed like your faith was just wasn't strong enough. And so God, in his mercy, he just, he just meets you anyway. One time I uh, had a guy who was crippled, and he had had a, a back operation, and the surgeon cut a little deep, and it paralyzed his, uh, him, uh, his legs. And he worked at a concrete company, and he was a dispatcher for those concrete trucks. His wife was a devout Christian, uh, George cussed like a sailor, but he loved me. And so I invited him to a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. And he came to this meeting, and uh, he did not have enough faith to blow his nose. But he came because of his wife and because of me, and he sat there, and while he was in the service, God healed him. Now, that didn't have anything to do with faith. That didn't have anything to do with him believing for God's scriptures. It was just the mercies of God. Well, one of the most amazing things that happens when a person enters into this supplication and they enter it through fasting is God puts them in a place where he pours out his mercy and there's no case that I've read about in the Bible where a person was fasting where they didn't receive the mercy of God. Are y'all listening over here? Come on, wave over here if you just heard what I said. In the, in the Bible, there's a story about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a king. He was a godly king. And uh, it appears that he had cancer. And so Isaiah was the prophet, went to him and he said, put your house in order, you're going to die. So he turns his face to the wall and he begins to weep. He fasts, he prays, and he said, God, extend my life. Give me 15 more years. And God speaks to Isaiah and he comes back and he says, well, God heard your, or your prayer and your supplication and God's going to extend your life 15 more years. And as a sign to you, the sundial is going to move backwards. Now, in those days, they didn't have clocks, but they had a big sundial out in the courtyard, and that sundial moved actually backwards. So God gave him 15 more years. Well, he didn't have any children. And it was during that time he had a son by the name of Manasseh. And you would think that, you know, being born of Hezekiah, you'd be a real... Uh, uh, somebody very faithful to God, but he wasn't. He turned out to be a pervert. He was so evil, he was one of the most evil kings ever. He um, took his children and offered them to demons, the demon Moloch. Uh, prophets came to him. People came and tried to warn them, and when he did, he killed them. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about in that chapter of faith, the 11th chapter, and it talks about, and those that were sawed asunder. And what it's a reference to is Isaiah the prophet who prayed for Hezekiah to be healed. His son Manasseh, when Isaiah came and said, listen, man, you need to stop this. He took him and he, he, he had him bind his hands and his feet and he had him tortured and cut in half with a saw. Now, if you were God, wouldn't you strike him? I would beat the tar out of, of Manasseh. But you know what God did? God allowed the Hittites. And the Hittites, they lived down in, in Nineveh. They were some of the most ruthless people you could imagine. And they would torture their victims. They took him captive. And the Bible says in Chronicles, they put a nose ring right here. And they led him away just like you'd lead a bull by the nose. And they led him into captivity. Now he is in Nineveh. And the Bible says he greatly humbled himself, which means he fasted for 40 days. To humble yourself is to fast. To greatly humble yourself is a long fast, which would be a 40-day fast. And during that time, God 
released his mercy, not his grace, but his mercy on that man. He was allowed to return to Jerusalem as the king. He turned to God. He helped turn the nation back to God. And if there was anybody who deserved death, it was that King Manasseh. But when he, he entered into fasting and he entered into supplication, God released his mercy upon him. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. And I believe that God wants to release mercy upon everyone here today in Jesus' name. We had a man who preached in our church numerous times. He's, he's passed now, but his name was Harold Bredesen. Harold Bredesen was in the congregational church, and later he would join the Lutheran church. And so he had graduated from seminary, and uh, he went to Aberdeen, South Dakota, where he was doing his internship under this pastor. Well, there had been a, a real move of God in Aberdeen, and this uh, charismatic church had come up, and people started getting healed and delivered. And in this Lutheran church, there were a number of families that had left the church, and they'd gone over to that Lutheran church, uh, that charismatic church. And so uh, Harold was sent out to visit these people and tried to get them back. Well, he discovered one lady was healed of a garter. There was a, a man who'd been cross-eyed all of his life. God healed him. There was a baby that was dying. A miracle happened to that baby. And uh, they felt that they'd been missing this all their life. So he went to see this old woman. And she had crippling arthritis. And he, he was talking to her. And, and she was talking and says, well... Says, I, I believe these miracles are happening. Says, why don't you pray for me? If you'll pray for me and God heal me, I'll come back to the church. And so Harold prayed for this lady with crippling arthritis that God would heal her so she'd come back to the church. Well, when he got home that night, he felt so guilty. He said, Well, Lord, I know you don't heal. I know those days of miracles are over. And I was doing that, trying to get her back into church. Forgive me, I'll, I'll straighten it out tomorrow. And uh, then he, he was wondering if maybe God did heal. And so he said, well, I, I'm just going to see, I'm just going to open the Bible, and Lord, I'm going to put my finger on a scripture, and if, if you heal, then you, you guide my finger. How many ever done that? Don't do that. Lord, what should I do? And he hung himself. And don't do this stuff like that. But that's what he did, and he touched the Scripture in Psalms 103, verse 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. He said, oh, you know, anybody could have done that. So he goes to see this lady the next day, and he goes in. He said, I want to apologize. I came, and I prayed for you to be healed. And uh, before he could say anything else, she said, and God answered the prayer. Look at my crooked fingers. And they were all straight and totally healed. Come on, give the Lord a great big praise to So Harold Bredesen uh, received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. God began to use him mightily. And he went to New York City. And he started a church in, in New York. And he began to pray. He'd ride the subway. And he would do these shooting prayers. He'd just shoot prayers at people. And so he's riding the subway. And there's a young man over there. And he's shooting a prayer. And God gives him a word for him. Well, he didn't know this young man was Pat Robertson. A graduate of Yale uh, Law School. His dad was a United States senator from Virginia, and God had, had uh, saved Pat Robertson, called him into the ministry, and he had, uh, was going to a seminary there in New York City. Well, he goes over to him, and he begins to prophesy to Pat Robertson, who he doesn't know him, and he says, God's going to raise you up. You're going to give you TV stations. You're going to preach. 
And this was when, when no one was preaching on TV. There was not a Christian TV station ever at that point. And Pat Robertson was so touched. He thought, first, he thought he was a quack. And then he uh, ended up being his youth pastor. He, that's where he received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It was, it was this guy, Harold Bredesen. So Harold Bredesen, the Lord led him one day to the St. George Hotel. And there he looked, and there was a beautiful um, Arab lady. She was sitting, and he went over and sat down beside her, and he said, would it be all right if I prayed for you? And so he began to pray for this Arab lady, and he began to pray for her in tongues getting to pray for her in the Holy Ghost. Well, he did not know that this, this lady was an Egyptian um, princess. She was an heiress. She had come there to New York on business, and she was there at this hotel, and when he prayed for her, she, her eyes got big, and he, she said, you know, my mother was a devout Christian. And you prayed in the very dialect of my mother. You, it, it, he had no accent as he prayed. And he prayed one of the very prayers his mother, her mother had prayed for her. She uh, accepted Christ. She received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. God did a tremendous work. God used her with great influence in her country. I'm here to say this is a time that God wants to release his power upon every young person, upon every man, woman, boy, and girl. And so we set a time, we set a time where we can enter into great prayer and supplication and God will speak to us and God will direct us. Oh, hallelujah. Now, during the next, uh, this week, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to be having with us a, a brother that I've known for 20 years. Uh, he was pastoring a church of about 4,500 people in South Africa, and God told him to resign, and he went to Australia. He took eight people, eight families, and, uh, and in two years, they had a church. They had built a church debt-free, and paid $4.8 million. And God spoke to him and gave him this plan how to plant churches. And his goal was to plant 1,000 churches. Now, that's been probably 20 years ago, and he has planted now 250,000 churches. His goal now is to plant one million churches. If I would have understood what God showed him, I would have planted a thousand churches already. But I just have begun to see how that works. Sometimes when you plant a church, you have to take people and you have to do this and do that. And it's good, like going to the dentist. It's like going and getting a root canal with no Novocaine. And you think, oh, man, that is the most painful thing to start a church. But when you begin to see what God showed him, it's something that is a revelation. And I feel that during the next few years, God would have us to start 100 churches. Now, to do that, there have to be people that are called. And many of you that are sitting in these different, in different places, there's a call of God on your life. And you want to do something for God. And many of you have a real call as a pastor. But you say, how can I do that? I'm a, I'm a, a dentist. I'm a, a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm a... I'm, I'm in business. But when you look in the Bible, the guys who started these churches, they, they were business people. 
Peter, he had a, a fleet of fishing boats. He never sold those boats. Um, I, uh, I was invited to come and preach in Malaysia. And this doctor, this, he's a medical doctor. He pastors this church. He, runs, he told me to run a little over 500 people. He said, what I do, he said, I have two days a week. I go over there and I work there in the church. And then I've got a lawyer. He's got a call, and so he works two other days. He said the church is growing. We've outgrown our building. Malaysia is a, you can go to prison if you convert anybody to Christ. So to have a church in Malaysia means probably you're running 30 people, 20 people, 50 people. He runs 500 people. It's a, that is a, that's like having a church here running about 10,000 people. So what? So every place you go and you see these pastors, they're, they're people that are business people. They're people that, that, that yet God is using them mightily in the name of the Lord. Can I hear an amen? And I feel that God would have our church to plant over, a, uh, over 100 churches in the next few years. I, I, every person and every group that is here from Nigeria, that's here from Asia, that's here from India, from the Philippines, we have 47 countries that are represented in this church. We have our African fellowship that meets this week. They're in a different location. We have 38 services in our different 10 locations. But I believe God wants us to plant churches. Churches in Cuba. Churches in Guatemala. Churches around the world. You say, well, how do you do that? Well, I believe God will send the money in. I believe God will send the people in. And God will make it all work in the name of the Lord. If you have any kind of call on your life, any kind of call, I want you to come to these meetings. They're uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They're in the day. They're during the daytime. From not this week, yeah. Oh, can you come? Are you going to be here? Nine to four. Can you show up nine to four? I want you to wear those purple uh, pants there, too, as you come. But it's be from nine until four, and I, it's going to be powerful. Now, I want to pray for you today, and then at the end, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray that God will anoint me, that God will send the money in that we need, that God will enable us to do everything that we need to do to equip people to accomplish His great will. George Barna is considered the greatest... Um, statistician who comes and gives information for churches and trends. How many's read any of his books, George Marna? He followed this, uh, this gentleman who's coming, and he did surveys with his, the people who, who went. The average person who attends this, this uh, school starts 2.5 churches, and there are 49 people that get saved the first year. Isn't that an amazing thing? 49 people get saved, an average of 2.5 churches. So if you had 100 people come, just the average would be 250 churches. Just the average would be multiply 250 times 50. How much would that be? There you have it. Amen. Amen. How many as good at math as, as I am? Praise God. That'd be, uh, that'd be uh, uh, 10,000, 15,000 people. Is that right? Is my math that, that good? Is that right? You can't add any better than I can. Hallelujah. 250 times 50 is 15,000, right? Is that right? 12,500, that's just what I said. Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Praise God. I want every head bowed. 
Father, I want to thank you for every person in this room. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you have a great call on our lives. With every head bowed, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I am not in the place spiritually where I ought to be with God. But today, I want to make things right with the Lord. Would you pray for me? Can I see your hand? Just slip your hand up right now. Yes, God bless you. Are there others? Just put your hand up. Yes, sir, God bless you. God bless you over here. God bless you. Yes, sir, God bless you right here. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. How many are here and you say, Pastor, I know God has a call on my life to pray. And I want God, that anointing, to be greater in my life than ever before. And I want, to, I want that spirit of intercession to fall on my life. Can I see your hand? Hold your hand up. Yes, 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 yes. How many are here and you say, Pastor, I know God has a call on my life. I don't know what, to, what extent, but there's a real call on my life to some sort of ministry. Can I see your hand? Hold up your hand. Praise God. I want everyone who raised your hand to just stand where you are. I want to pray for you. Stand, stand where you are. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in this prayer. I want you to also stand. Praise God. Place your hand right here on your heart. I want everyone to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, as best I know how, I mean this prayer today. I ask you to forgive me of every sin. Remove any blockage in my life that would hinder you from using my life. Take out of me hurt feelings, things that Satan has used against me, weaknesses in my character. God, take that out of me, and may I be the person you've called me to be. Fill me with your love. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now take your hand and place it on your forehead. Father, I loose the anointing of prayer upon every man, woman, family that's represented here. I, I ask God and we give you permission to wake us up in the night, to speak to us and call us to prayer. I loose angels to visit your room, to visit your home. In Jesus' name, Lord, honor this prayer for your glory and for your honor. Now, I want everyone to stand, everyone standing. I want us to continue this prayer. I want everyone to pray, say, Lord Jesus, you have a call on my life. And wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I yield to that voice. Lord, you lead me and you guide me you open the right doors, and you close the wrong doors. In Jesus' name. Now stretch your hands out towards me. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, anoint Pastor Bob, and anoint this church to fulfill its vision and call in this city and in this nation. Lord, allow an anointing to build over a hundred churches around the world. Raise up people in this congregation. Raise up our sons and daughters to be missionaries, to go into the four corners of the earth and preach the gospel. Send the money. Send the finances. Lord, you've got more than enough. In Jesus' name, for the glory of God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. How many meant that prayer? Hold your hand up. Praise God. Well, I believe God's going to honor that. God's going to, I'll just stay down here. God's going to meet that in the name of Jesus. Well, how many glad you came to church today? Amen. Praise God. What did I preach on? Do you all remember what I preached on? One time I, I, I asked uh, my mother, I said, Mother, do you remember what I preached on? She said, no, but it was good. <laughs> Thank God for moms. Amen. Praise God.